Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to our service this morning. First song will be number 455. Four hundred fifty-five. Lord, we come before Thee now, at Thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit everybody to worship this morning, especially those of you who are visiting with us and those who are live streaming with us as well. Uh, it's great to have everybody out this morning. Um, if you are here, if you would fill out a visitor's card and put that uh, in the complex collection plate when you leave this morning, that would be great. And it's great to have everybody here. Our services are 1030 Sunday morning worship and 6 p.m. Sunday evening worship. There are uh, new safety guidelines in place to ensure proper social distancing and for serving of communion. Uh, we ask that you be considerate of others. Uh, join us for live stream and Facebook uh, if you're not feeling well. There will be a teacher's meeting today in the fellowship hall uh, immediately following morning worship service. Uh, we're going to talk about safety protocols, our curriculum. Uh, if you're willing to teach, if you would attend that meeting. Uh, if you're willing to teach and you cannot attend, please let me know um, and we will get our classes set up. We are going to have three youth classes in the fellowship hall, in the education wing, and the new classroom. We'll have one adult class here in the auditorium. So just to make sure everybody is aware of that. We will start Sunday school classes on August the 30th. Uh, again, if you're interested in teaching, please see me or attend today's meeting be a Bible Bowl practice this afternoon at 4.30 in the large classroom in the education wing. A uh, reminder that the Wednesday night ladies class meets each week at 7 p.m. Uh, on Zoom. Uh, see Meg Payne if you want the details and the link for that meeting. The ladies, ladies sewing group will meet Friday at 12.30 in the fellowship hall. Uh, for more information, see Wanda Stringer. And the young men will be conducting the evening services on August the 30th. Uh, please see Tom Payne if you're interested in participating. I have one thank you note. It says, thank you so much for the cards, calls, and prayers after my recent surgery. They were appreciated and uplifting. Thank you also for the wonderful food delivered last Sunday. It is great to be part of such a caring congregation, especially one with such great cooks, Ann Robinson. That's all the announcements I have. We'll have a reading at this time. Good morning. If you have your Bibles with you, if you would, please turn with me to Acts chapter 16. If you want to follow along on the screen behind me. Acts chapter 16, I'll be reading from uh, the English Standard Version. And just a little bit of a background up to this point. Um, the Holy Spirit has, has forbidden uh, Paul from going into Asia. 
Uh, they tried to go into Bithynia, and then and this is the, the vision that appears to Paul in verse 9 of chapter 16. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Song for opening prayer will be number 335. 335. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver light that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and sin, my friend, trust his promises grand. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the mouth may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then you are truly can see. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing me happy today. Oh, we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the forces of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust me stay, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing me happy today. We pray to you, please. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. So thankful we can be here and gather in your name. Lifting our voices to you, singing, be happy today. Lord, I pray you be with us during this worship service. Thank you for letting us to, to be together, to come together as Christians. Lord, we just pray that we give you the glory and honor that you deserve. Lord, we are so thankful for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Lord, help us to always be mindful of, of all that you've done for us, for the privileges that we have to be able to live in this country, to exercise our, our right to worship. Lord, we're so thankful for the men and women who have fought for those rights for us to be able to enjoy our freedom. Lord, we ask that you please bless those who have served in the past. We ask that you please bless those who are currently serving, those who are in harm's way. Lord, we pray uh, for their safety. We pray for those families who are separated right now. I ask that you please be with them. Lord, we pray for our our leaders of our country, uh, upcoming elections, Lord, just to be with um, those leaders who, who make decisions. Uh, Lord, we just pray that they look to you for wisdom, that they do uh, 
what is right. Well, we're so thankful for this congregation here at Stroudsville. Lord, you've blessed us in so many ways, and we just want to give you all the glory and honor for, for that. Lord, we do ask that you please be with uh, those who are sick, those who aren't able to be with us this morning, who are not feeling well or, or, or staying at home for their own protection. Lord, I just ask that you please uh, bless them. Please be with those who've lost loved ones who are carrying heavy burdens at this time. Lord, just comfort them. Help us to reach out and minister to them as we should. Lord, we pray for our elders. We're so thankful uh, for Brother Gene and, and Brother Bobby and Brother Howard. Lord, the work that they do here, Lord, I just ask that you please uh, bless them, uh, give them wisdom and encouragement, Lord, and just so thankful uh, for them. Lord, thankful for our deacons. I ask you please uh, bless the many ministries that we have going on here um, at Stroudsville. And as they, as they lead, Lord, just ask that you bless them and give them wisdom as well. Lord, we pray for Brother Tom, thankful for his ministry here at Strousel, the way he brings us uh, your word every week, the many things that he does uh, in the middle of the week, Lord, to check, check on our congregation. Lord, we're so blessed by him and thankful for him and Meg uh, being here. I ask you please be with him today as he uh, brings this sermon. Lord, we're so thankful for each and every member here, so thankful for uh, the friendships that we enjoy, the fellowship that we get to enjoy. So thankful for what unites us, Lord, and that's uh, your son. Because if, if it were not for him, uh, none of this would be possible, Lord. And we probably wouldn't know each other and get to um, enjoy uh, worship together. Lord, I ask for your uh, blessing on the, uh, on the upcoming as, us, as we start our Bible school back. I'm thankful for uh, David and, and the elders who have coordinated uh, that effort, Lord. And I ask for your blessing on it as uh, we get our children back in classes and, and get to learn from your word. Lord, just please uh, be with that effort and, and ask for your, for your protection, your guidance, and, and thankful for that opportunity. Lord, I ask you please be with the uh, young men at the end of the month as they'll be leading a service. So thankful for the young men here in this congregation who are willing to get up and, and uh, preach from your word, Lord, and, and take leadership roles. Lord, just ask that you bless them, as well as, as all our youth, Lord, as they've gone back to school. Lord, we ask for their protection. We ask that you please be with them as, as they will uh, just be undergoing some of the temptations and, and things like that that, that, that they, they have, Lord, and it's an unusual school year starting back. We ask for your protection against the virus for them. We ask for uh, peace from worry for, for parents and for all the uh, faculty and, and staff and at, at their schools, Lord, the administration. Just ask that you uh, please bless them. Lord, we're uh, so thankful for the many things we ha have going on here at Stroudsville. Thankful for the summer-long effort of Bible Bowl and ask for your blessings on it as it will be coming to a close here in the next few weeks. Lord, we're thankful for for Miss Shannon and her dedication of teaching the, the young kids and them learning from your word. Lord, just so thankful for that opportunity. And, and uh, Lord, just ask you please bless them. Lord, as we prepare our hearts and minds to go together in, into communion, Lord, we pray that we are mindful of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and how he made all these things possible fact that he came to this earth to live as a man and gave himself up on cross that he endured torture endured a criminal's death and he shed his blood for us lord as we prepare for that let us be mindful of what that sacrifice means to us what that the possibility of us being in heaven with you someday will be lord we pray that uh, that we prepare our hearts and our minds properly it's through jesus christ's name we pray Prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. We'll sing number 160. 160. We'll sing first and last verses. 
I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From rims of all, Jesus freely came to Before we begin the communion service, we just like the elders have directed us um, that we allow a little more time for taking the emblems. Uh, so we're going to have a, a short pause, uh, about a 90 second pause between each emblem so that you have time to both focus on the body and the blood of Jesus Christ as we commune together on his sacrifice and allow you time enough to do so and not feel rushed. So I just want you to know that ahead of time. We, we heard some of the members were having difficulty, as, as I have a couple of times. And so uh, the elders always respond uh, to the membership's needs, uh, especially at this important time. This is not a time that we want to rush through, so uh, you take your time when you're taking the bread and the fruit of the vine. Um, you know, I reflect back. I've been reading the scriptures in Mark and Luke about Jesus when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. It's ironic. So many things coalesced in such a short period of time. You know, just just before that, Jesus had instituted his his death, burial, and resurrection when in the Last Supper with his apostles. And I don't think they ever really fully understood. As sometimes I don't think we do uh, fully understood the magnitude and the stress and the tension that Jesus was going through. Being the son of God, he knew what was going to happen before it happened. This was God's plan 
the beginning of man because man sinned as God knew he would. We have a hard time, I do anyway, of getting my mind around the fact that God is all-knowing, all-seeing. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. That's a continuum. That's not a start and a stop like we do. And yet, still, knowing what he knew, he was uh, God in man. And when Jesus took his, uh, I call them his peeps, his inside guys, it was Peter, James, and John. He didn't take all of them. He'd already had, he'd had the Last Supper with them, basically wished them all goodbye, basically told Judas, Judas, you're going to betray me. Uh, he covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time. And then, in the final few hours of his life on this earth, he wanted to be near people. And don't we, aren't we that way? You know, I can't think of a family in this congregation that hadn't been touched by some type of tragedy. Death of a loved one, sickness, cancer, you name it. Stroud's built for a little congregation. We've been through a lot. And you know, the Lord didn't abandon us, but he sure didn't. I've prayed many times in many crises in my life. Lord, you know, take it away. I don't want to go through this. Jesus, we can relate to what Jesus said. He didn't tell God, oh, help me through it, Father. He says, take it away, Father. If you can take this cup of anguish from me, take it away. And I found myself praying the same prayer, and I think many of you have too. What's important about that is, is we're human, and God made us human. And he knows sometimes suffering is so great, all we're asking is just relieve the pain, make it go away. Uh, little children, you know, remember when you were a little kid and you, you get a, a hurt, a boo-boo, and boy, you just want mom and daddy to just kiss it away for you. Well, that's the way with Jesus. You know, he asked God several times, said, just if it's possible. And he knew it, you know, he, yet he knew it, and yet he was human enough. He wanted to go away if that was any way possible. And so uh, we, I can relate that on a human level, that although Jesus is our risen Savior, I love what Brian Ryan Blunt said last week, you know, we need to celebrate the victory over death, the victory over sin, but we also need to be practical enough. We're, Jesus hasn't uh, told us, oh, no, it's, you got it made, don't worry, everything's fine. No, we've got our, our sorrows that we have to deal with and go through. But one thing that Jesus said that stuck out in my mind after all of that, praying where it was like blood pouring out of him, uh, he said, not my will, but yours be done. And I've reached that critical point in my life, and I know many of you have too. You finally say, Lord, it doesn't look like nothing's going to happen like I want it to. So it's not my will, but your will be done. And so I think we can learn through this communion service, we are celebrating the victors. We're taking the victor's lap when we take communion and the bread, celebrating the victory over death, over over suffering for eternally uh, that's the hope we have is the the victory over eternal suffering so consider these things as you're taking these uh, emblems of his body and his blood let's go in prayer lord jesus we are so humbled and in awe of what you've done for us uh, in our lives sometimes in spite of us and not because of us we none of us stand justified before you on anything that we have done or are doing. We simply serve you because we love you and we know what you have done for us. So, Father, as we take this bread, help us each one here to remember and thankfully uh, reflect on your sacrifice and not of ours. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
us pray again. Almighty Father, as we approach your throne, we approach it as your family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, sharing jointly in the victory that he shed his blood for that victory. As we partake this fruit of the vine that represents that blood, may we do so humbly and thankfully and joyfully on the fact that he overcome death and he overcame persecution and he overcame a world that turned its back on him so that he might save it. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Having concluded the Lord's Supper, and just as a closing thought, you know, this is just a continuation of the first day of the week, the Lord's Day. And so don't just think on Jesus' sacrifice for you and your family and for all of the church family that we have. We need to remember this every day of the week that we go through, that Jesus did this for us. This is why we have what we have we are what we are and be thanksgiving have thanksgiving in your heart uh, all week long uh, this is just a victory celebration when we come together for the lord's supper so thank on these things always we'll now have uh, offering for prayer uh, and as usual there's a plate back in the uh, foyer so as you exit you can leave your uh, giving there let's pray dear god we know that everything we have, all with who we are, and everything that we can be is from you. You're the giver of good gifts. You're the father of lights. You love your children. You dote on your children. You want the best for your children. And your children need to realize the best for them is eternal life with you and your son. Father, I can't imagine any alternative to what could be offered for you but eternal life, oh, thank you, Father. I'm humbled at your presence. I'm thankful in my heart for an eternity, not just this time, but all the time. Be with us now as we return back to you, which is yours, what you created, created, and we have such thanksgiving in our hearts. It's in Jesus' name we pray this, Father. Amen. like to mark your songbooks or song of invitation after the lesson be number 608 608 before a lesson send sing number 217 217 there's a call comes ringing o'er the restless way send the light Send the light, there are 
our souls to rescue, that our souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Please say the place. Good morning. Great to see everyone here today. Thank you for being here. I know some of you are watching remotely through uh, Facebook or, or YouTube, and we're glad that you're here as well. We're continuing our lesson series on evangelism and the gospel. We start out each lesson reminding ourselves what Jesus said to his apostles, follow me and, and I will make you fishers of men. So... Men who went from catching fish in nets to catching fish and teaching them the gospel and sharing the good news of Jesus. I appreciated the words that Ryan shared in his prayer earlier today and, and also what Glenn shared in the, in the Lord's Supper, reminding us of our duty to reach out and, and love the lost. We've looked at several words in the acrostic evangelism. Last week we looked at good news and what does it mean when we talk about the gospel how is it defined? Today we're adding the sixth letter, which is E for everyone. Everyone. And I appreciate Brian singing that song, Send the Light. And in the, in the song, it reminds us that we go from shore to shore, across the shore. I know here at Stroudsville, we have a lot of evangelistic efforts and missionaries that we support. I've been to Ghana several times. And uh, you have supported me in that effort, and I appreciate the elders and the deacons continually focusing on our sharing of the good news of Jesus Christ and getting that message out. Today's lesson is going to be a little different. It's a combination of uh, a word to encourage you to evangelize and help in those efforts of getting out the message of the gospel. It's also going to be a little bit of a history lesson as we look at one of the earliest church missionaries affiliated with Churches of Christ. I was ignorant of this particular missionary and so much enjoyed reading his history. I'll share some of it with you. I'll talk about the work he did and I want to just challenge us to never ever forget the importance of getting the gospel out to a lost world. Mark 16, 15, 16 we start off each lesson reminding ourselves what Jesus said shortly before his ascension. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, everyone. And so you may think, well, that means the people I like or my friends or my neighbor. It means everyone, including your neighbors, your enemies, people you don't like, people you do like. Everybody needs to hear the gospel. 
You may recall in the song that Brian led a moment ago, it mentioned in Send the Light the Macedonian call. That actually comes from what Cavan read us in Acts 16, 9 through 10. I'm going to go over it again. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. So Paul had desired, the Bible tells us, to go into Asia, but the Holy Spirit forbid him from entering that country. It wasn't time. Not that the gospel didn't go to Asia. It wasn't the right time. However, through a vision, the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul, and a man, he sees a vision of a man asking him, begging him from Macedonia to call. So that tells us in the text that Paul actually responded and went. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Acts 16, verses 9 through 10. God wants a message to go out everywhere into the whole world and we have in part a responsibility to do that whether we contribute funds whether we pray for missionaries we write letters of encouragement whatever that effort is we need to get the word out no person should ever be excluded from hearing about the gospel the love of Jesus Christ the gospel is for all now, here's the less, uh, history part of our lesson today. The person in, in um, the spotlight, if you will, is John Moody McCaleb. Now, I, again, I confess my ignorance. I didn't know anything about John Moody McCaleb, and maybe you've never heard of him before. He was born in 1861. He died in 1953. That's several years before I was even born. So he was truly a pioneer missionary affiliated with the Churches of Christ. Very interesting. John Moody McCaleb. Now the song that we're going to be talking about is The Gospel is for All. Maybe some of you know it. We'll be looking at the chorus and some of the stanzas today. But this was a song actually written by John Moody McCaleb. Let me tell you about John Moody McCaleb. He was born in Hickman County in Tennessee, born January 25th. 1861. He was the youngest of several children. I think he had five other brothers uh, and born to Lucy Jane Beasley McCaleb. Now, I thought that was interesting. During the Civil War, he was six months old and his father was crossing a creek, a little shallow stream. He failed to hear a sentry who was actually a military man who said, Halt. The sentry, thinking that he was possibly. Um, from the, from the army, uh, from the enemy, shot him and killed him uh, crossing that stream simply because he didn't hear the warning. It's kind of a sad story. So he was fatherless at a very early age. Later, as he grew up, his, his mom remarried, and providentially he went to a Bible college up in Kentucky. He, while at Bible, Bible college, came under the influence of a very prominent figure in the Churches of Christ, James A. Harding, who was born in 1848, died in 1922. Now, Harding, at this time, you may recall when you go back to the, the earliest times of, of the formation of what we know now as Churches of Christ, there seemed to be a division at some point in that timeline, if you study church history, and that's between missionary societies and basically congregations supporting missionaries independently and not forming missionary societies and and so McCaleb sort of fell in the camp of the churches of Christ and saying we don't want to have missionary societies where there's centralized pools of money uh, we'd rather sponsor men or women as they go out into the mission field autonomously and so that was uh, his teaching that he held to and so uh, he stood firmly in that tradition of the churches of Christ um, but he also was a proponent of this. And so he sort of uh, went against the grain in that not part of a missionary society. He was supported rather poorly, I might add, <laughs> by various congregations and ended up um, thinking about going to Japan for mission work. I found this very, very fascinating. As he became more interested in his work in Japan, I, I learned that later he met with David Lipscomb, the founder of David Lipscomb University, 
and he wanted to establish preaching schools in Japan. Now, this was in the uh, late 30s, early 40s. And so uh, I'll get to something else that was a very significant event. His work was so difficult. Early, early pioneer missionaries um, tried to live and eke out a living and also try to work while he was in Japan. But listen to what he did uh, on this next slide. By 1909, he and other missionaries who had come to help him from the Churches of Christ converted over 650 people who lived in Japan. 650, amazing. I find that so unusual that he had to learn the language, learn the culture, go over there and establish congregations. Now, in the 1920s, that work had grown into 11 congregations. He established five preaching schools while in Japan. What's kind of sad is in 1941, those of you who are historians understand that that was the emerging of the war in the Pacific, World War II. Japan now went from being a wide open country that was open to receiving Jesus Christ to becoming our enemy at war. So because of World War II, 1941, 46 missionaries had joined him and helped him in that work in establishing congregations. So I find this so amazing about McCaleb and his early pioneering work. He took the Great Commission seriously. He believed that the gospel needed to go to all of the world. And so he was one of the first people to go into Japan and, and teach the precious, precious message of Jesus Christ. In the bulletin article, perhaps you had a chance to read it. I want you to stop and, and ask yourself a question. What if, ask yourself, what if I had never been born in America? What if I had been born in a remote and distant village somewhere in communist China? Or how about in Russia or a remote village in Iceland where as a young person I never heard the word Jesus mentioned? How would that message come to me? Well, the truth is, if you look at history of the church, a lot of times we employed shortwave radio that would broadcast long distances. We've set up, World Christian Broadcasting has set up radio towers that, that broadcast through shortwave. Villages so poor they can't even own televisions, but they can have a small handheld shortwave radio. And all these broadcasts, we broadcast into the remote regions of the world the message of Jesus Christ. We hire through World Christian Broadcasting, for example, Translators who speak in all the languages of the world and translate those radio broadcasts into these remote villages. That's probably how they can hear. But in this case, McCaleb was willing to go and establish congregations in Japan, teach. What if you were raised in a communistic country where it was forbidden to teach and Bibles had to be brought in concealed in suitcases and hidden and you knew that you faced the possibility of rest or imprisonment if it was discovered that you were smuggling Bibles into your communist country. You see, brothers and sisters, while we sit on our padded pews each Sunday and we worship, we often forget what our own brethren have done because they love the Lord, and they love lost souls, and they believe that the gospel needs to go to everyone. Everyone. Do you believe that it needs to go to everyone? Who would you be willing to share Jesus with this year? And have you actively prayed? I want to challenge you at a, very, at a deep primal level. I want to act, challenge you. Who have you asked the Lord to teach? Or have you said, Lord, I'm, I'm open. Lead me. Help me to find a single person here in the United States. Not through fear of persecution. Not through fear of arrest or to be beaten. But help me to disentangle myself from the busyness of the world and the daily activities and, and, and the wealth that I have, help me to get disinterested in some of those things just enough to teach one person. Church, are we suffering from apathy in a very blessed nation? 
Are we suffering from, from amnesia, forgetting that our primary directive as Christians is to take the gospel to everyone? I grew up as a child in the fervor of the 50s and the 60s and the early 70s where we had cottage meetings and people knocking on doors and gospel meetings. My mom and dad took me down to Marietta, Georgia, where we had campaigns and established congregations. I was taken in 1969 to a foreign mission field and watched my parents struggle with a little congregation to establish it and have Bible studies in their home. I was indeed blessed to witness love in action. We know that in Romans, Paul says that the wages of sin is death. You see, God teaches in his moral law that if we commit a sin, we have transgressed his law and deserve to die. Well, how many have sinned against God? Are there any of us who are perfect and without sin? The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so God, as was mentioned earlier in our lesson today, in our service, that God had enacted a plan where he sent his own son, Jesus Christ. God announced his own death the burial and the resurrection during that last supper. Knowing that he, God, would leave that heavenly throne and come on earth and die for mankind. That he would shed his blood for us. He was the propitiation, the price that was paid, the payment for the sin of mankind. That's good news. When we realize that we being under the death penalty because we're also under the condemnation of sin deserve to die, we receive forgiveness, atonement. We are justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when our own salvation becomes real to us and our forgiveness is good news, then we're inclined, brothers and sisters, to share it with others. Unless, of course, we have become apathetic. Unless we become entangled in the cares of the world and forgotten our primary directive. So here's McCaleb in the 1920s working to establish congregations in a foreign mission field to Japan, a true missionary. But yet, war breaks out in 1941. He's forced to come back to the United States. And I want to ask you a question. I want you to imagine how it must feel as he begins to hear reports of the war in the Pacific and Germany advancing toward the English Channel. And he thinks about his dear brothers and sisters in Japan. He can name them. He can speak in their language. He can write letters to them. And they're telling him about the Japanese conflict. How does he feel about Japan, whom America hates? You see, he understands, church, that the gospel is for everyone. And he has loved and befriended even the Japanese. Now, emerging in our hearts and minds in America, as enemies. And by the way, if you're a historian, I want you to ask yourself, did we not have Japanese prisoner of war camps and even take Japanese United States citizens and imprison them in the war? We hated the Japanese. Oh my goodness, when I was a young man and decided to buy a Honda Accord, my granddaddy just almost turned a different color. He called it a Pearl Harbor car. He did not like my purchase at all. And I, I struggle as a young man to think, Granddad, this is a wonderfully engineered vehicle. It's a Honda. You know, I couldn't understand the context and the history of why he hated the Japanese so much. You see, I didn't understand that he as a World War II veteran knew how Japanese prisoners of war or I'm sorry, American prisoners of war in Japan were treated. But now I do. Now I understand that they were the enemy. Let me share a little statistic with you. According to the U.S. Congressional Research Service, 27,000 Americans were taken prisoner by the Japanese. Guess how many died? 40% of those died in captivity. American men, young men in the Japanese war camps died. Conversely, those whom we captured, Japanese prisoners of war in the United States, less than 1% died. So who's the true enemy now? But Michaela, his heart is broken 
as we begin to be at war with a country whom he loves because he has brothers and sisters that he has taken the gospel to. You see, he loves everyone, even our enemy. In a nation later, consider our enemies. We had fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a wonderful, wonderful story, and I appreciate McCaleb's example for being a pioneer missionary who took the gospel to everyone, even those who later became my enemy. I read a, an interesting document about a young woman whose, whose grandfather had, had um, been taken prisoner of war in Japan, and, and he now since has died, but she went back to Japan and visited the, the war camp. And there's many Americans still waiting for an apology from Japan. I don't know if you've seen any documentaries or movies about this, but there's a lot of healing that still needs to go on. And she said, I found a very humble, contrite spirit in Japan, acknowledging what they had done to our young servicemen. She said, I wish my grandfather could have seen the love and the goodness of the people in Japan now and how they felt very remorseful for what had happened in that time. And so let me talk about McCaleb's song, The Gospel is for All. If you want to read along, it's in page 222 of your songbook. And I'm going to look at the chorus first. The Gospel is for All, written by our own brother in Christ. There's not a whole lot of songs in our hymnal written by members of the church. This is one, McCaleb, who had written this. The blessed gospel is for all. The gospel is for all. Where sin has gone, must go his grace. The gospel is for all. Remember in Romans, Paul says to us, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we, we ask the question, well, where has sin gone in the world? The answer is everywhere. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the gospel must go everywhere if sin has already gone everywhere. The gospel is for all. Let's sing the chorus. If you know the song, sing along with me. The blessed gospel is for all. The gospel is for all. Where sin has gone must go his grace. The gospel is for all. Stanza one. Of one the Lord has made the race. Through one has come the fall. Who's he talking about? Adam and Eve. Adam, the first man. Where sin has gone, must go his grace. The gospel is for all, McCaleb writes. Verse 2, now challenge to us here in the United States, established congregations, say not the, the heathen are at home. Beyond we have no call. For why should we be blessed alone? The gospel is for all. You see, some would say here in the United States in our affluent congregations, why go overseas? We've got people right here in the United States that need the gospel. Why spend the money, invest the effort? Why go over there? And so he's saying, don't say the heathen are at home only. There's lost people everywhere you go. Beyond, we have no call. If I'm not mistaken, didn't we read in Mark 16 and 15 and 16, go into the United States? No. You need to go into all the world. For why should we be blessed alone? The gospel is for all. Stanza 3, receive ye freely, freely give from every land they call. And lest they hear, they cannot live. The gospel is for all. And let me add, brothers and sisters, in every land, including Japan, my enemies in war too. The people who mistreated the young American men who served their country and many died, they need the gospel too. We forget that Judas, that had been mentioned in our Lord's Supper meditation, Judas was loved by the Lord. Judas had an opportunity to obey the gospel, but he chose not to. And there'll be many who hear the gospel message and sneer or laugh or disbelieve or turn their backs on the message of the gospel. But I'm here to tell you there is a loving God who wants the message to go to every soul, including 
our enemies. And I thank Michaela for his example, for his tireless effort. And I can relate to how his heart must have been broken in the height of the Pacific War as he shed tears riding back and forth to Japanese citizens who were now our enemy. Let's sing the chorus one more time, and the lesson is yours. The blessed gospel is for all, the gospel is for all. Where sin has gone must go his grace, the gospel is for all. I want to conclude today by just simply saying, first, Jesus died for you. He died for your sin. Once we've acknowledged the fact that we were lost, but now we're saved only by the blood of Jesus and his grace. Let that love be translated into our concern, into our action, into our interest in the lost souls throughout the world. I'm not asking you to travel on foreign soil, brothers and sisters, but I'm asking you to care enough to reach one person that you have influence in some way with who is not a Christian because the gospel's for all. It all begins with one person, one person that you're willing to reach for the sake of the gospel. Who is that one person going to be? We close our lesson inviting you to Jesus. We know who he is. We know what he did. We know what he shed, his blood. He gave his life. It's a beautiful love story. And if you need his blood today, if you need to be immersed in the waters of baptism, if you need to be cleansed and saved, He's willing if you are. He calls you to respond. Let's stand and sing as we're led in song, and the invitation's yours today. Appreciate each of you 
being here with us in person this morning and also those who are joining us by live stream. I'd like to invite each of you to be back with us tonight at 6 o'clock for evening worship. Also, uh, remind everyone, uh, those who are interested in teaching, please meet in the fellowship hall immediately following closing prayer. Any other final announcements? Not our closing song will be uh, Lord Rain in Me. Over all the earth you reign on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again over every thought, over every word. May my life reflect the beauty of my Lord. You mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me. Reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? So won't you reign in me again? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to worship Thee and to gain strength. We pray that we can take this strength out into the world, out into our neighborhoods, and to our families. And even if we can't visit directly people, we can communicate with them by phone, by letter, by text, by email. But let us reach out to those who are lost. Help us to bring the gospel, to, to bring salvation to our neighborhoods, our state, our country, and the world. Give us strength. Help us to always do thy will. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.